Alright guys, so we're back with a brand new video with the Discord Pi uh, commands framework. Last video, I kind of just showed you guys like an introduction on how the commands framework works and how to get started with it. Obviously, there's a bunch of other stuff to the commands framework. Okay, we can group commands, you can check if the person has specific permissions who is invoking the command. You do a bunch of checks uh, and a bunch of more things, in which we will go over in future episodes. Of course, in this video, I'm going to show you guys a couple basics, a little more basic things that uh, might, it might not seem like it's that important, but, you know, having them around could be very useful. Okay, so let's take a look at the event reference. Okay, so there's three events. These events are exclusive to the bot class itself. Because remember, the bot class is from the commands framework, and it's a subclass of the base client class. Okay, so of course, every other event that's from the client class, from the base library, is going to be inherited by the bot class, because the bot class is a subclass of it. Okay, so there's these three events, and you're probably wondering, well, what are these events? Okay, if you look at it, it says on command error, on command, and on command completion. Okay, so on command error should be pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. Basically, uh, yes, errors, exceptions can be thrown whenever uh, a command was uh, invoked incorrectly. By incorrectly, meaning like either someone without the correct permissions tried to invoke the command or someone invoked the command uh, and they didn't specify, you know, the correct amount of arguments and just a bunch of other stuff. Okay, those are the two ones. Those are the two main ones that I can think of right now. So let's go ahead and handle this event because there might be some times where uh, we might need to do something if someone issues a command incorrectly. So we're going to go ahead and say at client dot on command error. Or actually, no, I'm sorry, it's client dot events. And we're going to go ahead and do async def on command error. And this is going to take in two parameters. It takes in the context and the error. So the context, like I said, the context is a class that contains metadata about the, uh, basically the command. It contains, you know, context about the command, right? And again, it can contain the mess, it contains the message, uh, has the bot property, args, a bunch of things, okay? And like I said, just check out the documentation. A lot of it is pretty straightforward. And most of the stuff, you might not even, honestly, you might honestly not even end up touching most of the things anyways, but uh, it's there, okay? And it's very useful. But most of the time, like I said, if you want to, let's say, send a message back to the user, you would use the context object, and then you would reference the channel property, which is the channel itself, and then you'd use that to send the message back. Okay, so let's go back to our server, and I'm going to go ahead over here to Visual Studio Code. And we're going to go ahead and say this. Let's just say, uh, let's just see, let's print out the command that they invoked. So we're going to do context.command, which is the command that they invoked, and then the command is a command object. So if we want to get the name of it, we'd have to do command dot name. And we're going to go ahead and just say uh, was invoked incorrectly. Okay. And we can also log the error as well. Okay. And it's going to tell us exactly what the error is. So if I go over here and let's just see, I have the assigned role. And I did change this. So before in the last video, I had it as asterisk. Okay. But now I just change it to one positional arguments, which means that it needs to take in one argument at least for the assign role uh, method or the uh, command. So let's just say assign role. And now watch this. Assign role was invoked incorrectly. Let's zoom in. And it's going to say arg1 is a required argument that is missing. Now, notice how if I don't have this event handler, right? if I don't handle that event, and if I try to invoke the command again, if you look at your console, you're going to see we have all of this text and you're just like, what the hell? And why do we even have this? Like, you're probably looking at it like, wow, what does this even mean? Basically, whenever uh, your script, whenever a script, basically the library itself is raising this exception, all right, or throwing the exception. And whenever you throw an exception, you want to make sure you're handling it because if you don't handle it, uh, you're going to get this, you know, ugly text. Okay, now in order to, so if you don't handle your exceptions, you're going to get this, you know, ugly text and you want to make sure you handle it. And in this case, instead of using just, you know, a try catch, we can just do the on command error because that's what this event is for. Every single time um, an exception is raised, it's going to emit this event and we're going to get this nice text over here. So if I go ahead and save again, assign role, it's going to say assign roles invoke correctly. If I do add role. Right, it's going to tell you, so even if I use the alias, it's going to tell you the actual base name. In this case, it's assign role. Okay, and it's going to tell you arg1 is required, arg1 is missing. And of course, like I said, you can use this to your advantage. If you want to send a message back to the user, you can do so. 
um, again, it's up to you. I'm just showing you guys that these are the things that are available. So in case if you ever need them, they're there. We can also do, uh, let's see, client.events. We can also handle the on command. So this event will always be triggered whenever a command is invoked, whether the command was successful or the command uh, failed. Let's go back to the docs real quick. And this literally says an event that is called when a command is found and is about to be invoked. Okay. This event is called regardless of whether the command itself succeeds via error or completes. And of course, it just takes in the contact itself. So we can just go ahead and say ctx.command.name was invoked. You're probably wondering, well, why would I need this? Well, let's just say maybe you want to uh, see or keep track of how many times a specific command is invoked in a day. Right, you'd probably want to, you know, use this event to tally up all of the commands and how many times they were, or how many times they were invoked. So let's do add role. You're gonna see it's gonna say uh, assign role was invoked, and that's from this event over here. Okay, so I can go ahead and create maybe like a dictionary. Let's just say, uh, uh, let's just say commands tally, and we're we're gonna go ahead and do something like this is gonna be a dictionary. And let's just do, um, let's see, if ctx.command.name in commands tally. So if it's in there, we're just going to get, we're going to reference commands tally. I think we can do that by saying ctx.command.name. And so that's going to give us the value. Uh, I want to update that value. So I'm going to go ahead. I think I can just do plus equals one. And I think that should update it. I'm not, I guess I'm not. I'm not, I don't use Python too much, so I'm not too familiar with it. But if it's not in the dictionary, we can go ahead and do uh, commands.tally. I think it's, uh, yeah, I thought it was a pen, but I think it's actually, I think we actually just do this, ctx.command.name. That's going to map to one. And let's go ahead and just print that out every single time and see what happens. I think I might be wrong on the first part, definitely not on the second part. So let's just see, add role. Let's see what happens. So assign role, okay, that's one. Let's try it again. That's two, okay, yeah, so I did it correctly. Okay, that's good to know. I guess I'm not, I don't program too much in Python, so yeah. But you can see how I saved, so the bot restarted, but let's go ahead and do this. Let's say add role, okay, so that's gonna be one. Add role again, two, add role, uh, three. Let's just say assign role, four. Uh, what else? Hello. Uh, let's just see. Okay. Hello one. Hello. H H E. Okay. And then what else? Uh, assign role again. Uh, we have five. And what are the commands do I have? Uh, roll. Uh, R dice. Dice. Is that? Nope. And you can see. Oh, wait. I got another exception. Uh, oh, I see. That's because. Oh, okay. I see. That's because. Uh, I tried using a command that doesn't exist, and because we tried to reference the name of something that was none, uh, that's why we got this exception. So that's just on my fault. So we can actually, yeah, we'd have to actually check if ctx uh, dot command is not none. Then we do all this stuff. Because right now we our bot just crashed because you can see uh, none type, and just in this case the command property is none because the command I just I tried to invoke was I think roll, I think yeah. Yeah, roll and dice, and that didn't work. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. dice, that, that's what calls it, okay? But you guys get the idea, okay? This could be useful for tracking the amount of times a command was invoked. Um, whatever, okay? Just be creative. It's really, you know, up to, you know, how you want to implement it. I guess the final, um, the final uh, event that we can talk about is on command completion. So, obviously, it's pretty straightforward. This command is, this uh, event is only emitted whenever the command is successful uh, on completion. So we can go ahead and we can say um, <clears throat> uh, print ctx.command.name was invoked successfully. Okay, so if if an error happens with the command, this, um, this uh, event will not be triggered. Okay, so let's go ahead and do add role. You're gonna see that it says assign role was invoked incorrectly. Remember, add role is an alias, but let's just say add role hello. Assign role was invoked successfully. That's from the on command completion events.
okay so like i said it's very very useful in some situations of course it might not be useful right now but later on uh you might find it useful in some cases so um it's definitely good to uh understand how these things work okay and that's pretty much it for this video i'm going to go ahead and uh, next video i'll probably show you guys how to deal with uh, permissions and all that kind of stuff and you know make sure that a command is invoked by a specific you know group that has specific permissions and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.